In this video, we are going to go over some of the core configuration settings for Harmony, even in collaboration, focusing specifically on how to tune phishing and anti-spam configurations. In a previous video, we have onboarded the Harmony email and collaboration platform. If that's already been done, feel free to head over to settings, security engine, and this is where we'll find the bulk of our global configuration for this platform. Click on anti-phishing. Now this particular setting will make up the core global configuration for most of the decision-making processing for phishing and spam emails. This will define how strict or lenient your security policy is. Setting the policy to high or highest will ensure that we only block emails where we have a very high level of confidence that the email is phishing or spam. This will allow more false positives through as we have to be very confident before we block something. Setting it to low will ensure that we only block emails where we have a low confidence level, potentially having more false positives be blocked. It is recommended to start on medium or high for the best experience. You'll be able to tune or change this later if you feel the need to. If we scroll further down through these configurations, we will find the anti-impersonation configurations. There are three options available. You can configure no impersonation protection at all, configure this for just key people within the organization, or what we would recommend to perform this check against all people in the organization. But your specific needs may vary. VIP and important staff members job titles will be automatically collected from the user's Azure AD account and be populated into the Harmony email and collaboration system. If this hasn't been configured, you can manually add those job titles here. Generally speaking, we are looking for important titles like directors, CEOs, CFOs that make up those VIP status. If you don't wish to perform continuous checks against regular contacts, it is possible to change this to only perform these checks against the first time an email is received as a first time sender. Also, sometimes you may not wish to perform checks against accounts that have been disabled or deleted, although we would recommend that that will give you the greatest view of the attacks that are happening against your environment. Now, a self-impersonation attack is when an attacker tries to send an email to you pretending to be you. It is not very likely that you're going to fall for that attack. Now we've made some changes to our system, let's have a look at some of the malicious emails that we have quarantined. One thing that pops up very often is emails that have poor DNS hygiene. Misconfigured DKIM, DMARC and SPF records can often be an indication that the email comes from a non-trusted source. Let's have a look at an example of when that happens. We can see here a list of the emails that have been quarantined. I select this email by clicking on the subject. In this example, we can see the email was blocked due to phishing. And we can see specifically that this particular email has failed because it has failed its SPF check. If you head over to settings, anti-phishing and scroll to the bottom, you can see here we can control how strict or lenient we wish to be if the SPF records haven't been 100% configured correctly for inbound emails. These default settings will be suitable for most organizations and you really shouldn't have to change them, but you may have specific needs. When we assess emails, we create what is called the sender's reputation. The frequency in which you communicate to a company or user within an organization will make up what is called the relationship strength. For every single email, we analyze that relationship. Again, if we head back to our configurations, sometimes we may get hit with a piece of spam or phishing that comes from a domain of a regular contact of ours, but is actually a fake domain. It is advised that if an email comes in that resembles a regular partner we do business with, that you put this through a spam and phishing workflow, giving it additional inspection and potentially even quarantining those emails. We also analyze the body of every email that comes in for suspicious text and images. Let's have a look at an example email. If we scroll to the bottom of this event and we select show email body, you can see here that key paragraphs have been highlighted for you to explain what it was that we didn't like about that particular email. We can also see the raw body of the email to see everything, or we can select the main entries. And you can see here how the system has highlighted things that it will find interesting that will be used in the analysis of that email. In this example, we've got contact details and things about the organization that are of interest to us. Scanning links. 
Many emails will provide links, hyperlinks, and other things that potentially could have malicious content involved. In this particular event, you can see here, if you scroll down, go down to link analysis, and click one of those links, you can see here specifically what it was we didn't like about that email. This particular domain has a low amount of traffic going to it, which is potentially a suspicious. We've highlighted exactly what it was we didn't like about the email and given some feedback to the administrator. This is useful, but we don't know what that link would have led us to. So in the top right hand corner, if you click secure the preview, in a safe sandbox environment, a screenshot of that website will be taken. This is a benign screenshot that cannot harm anything, but would allow you to see what the user would have been tricked into going to. In this example, it is a looky like login domain. Hopefully in this video, we've shown you how Checkpoint can detect and can quarantine malicious emails that may come into your inbox. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below or reach out to your Checkpoint representative. Thank you for watching.